Treating yourself does not always have to break the bank. Girl, ask for help. Hey girl, hey, welcome or welcome back to my page. I'm Latricia Nicole. If you're new here, we discuss all things wife, mom, lifestyle, self-care, and mental health. So if those are your things, make sure to subscribe. So let's jump right into today's video. So typically I create content around affordable, manageable, easy mom, wife, just overall girl self-care, okay? And I recently made a post on my TikTok about mom mental health. And so in the post, I was just discussing things that moms need to do to make sure that they're taking care of themselves. Like, yeah, you want to take care of the kids. You want to make sure that the kids are straight. But what are you doing to pour into you? What are you doing to make sure that you're the best version of yourself so that you can take care of everyone around you? And so somebody commented and a comment just stuck with me. Um, and so her comment read, I tried, but how when everybody depends on you? You're the upkeep to a house that's full and has become dysfunctional. And I think we can all relate to that. I think we have all found ourselves where it's like everything around us is just pulling, pulling, pulling. Especially if you have kids, like you know. As moms, we typically say things like, oh, my kids are my world. My kids are my everything. I couldn't breathe without my kids. And while that is absolutely true, I stand on the fact that if you are not pouring into yourself, you can provide nothing to your kids. And all of this comes from a place of experience. I have a 22 year old. He'll be 22 tomorrow. I have a 22 year old. So I know a little bit about the ins and outs. I've seen the good, the bad and the ugly and I'm still learning and we are going to all learn together. So on today's video, I'm going to provide you with five subtle tips that I've used that have helped me get back to myself, allow me to grow and pour into me so that I can be the best version of me for my kids, for my husband, for my family and everybody around me. So let's get into it. Tip number one may be a little bit controversial, especially in today's economy and it's going to be to treat yourself. I know that that sounds counterproductive in the economy that we live in because when we think of treating ourselves, we think of going on a spa day, getting our hair done, getting our nails done. And those things, if we're being honest, can be expensive. And sometimes it's just not in our budget to do that, especially if you have kids, especially if you have a family that you're trying to take care of. Treating yourself does not always have to break the bank, okay? I decided a long time ago that every pay period, I don't care what's going on, I'm going to treat myself to something. Now that may be what some refer to as a toxic behavior, I don't know. It has definitely helped me in getting back to me, okay? And when I say treat myself, sometimes it may be something as simple as going to Marble Slab and getting an ice cream cone. Just something for myself. My idea of treating myself may be different from your idea of treating yourself. So find what you like and, and see if you can find the budget friendly form of that if the budget is the issue or preventing you from treating yourself. Sometimes it's the budget and honestly, sometimes it's just you feel like you don't have enough time in a day to do anything for you or to treat yourself. So. When I say that it don't have to cost money, sometimes me treating myself is getting away from the hustle and bustle of the house and getting out of the house and just taking a walk around the block. That's a treat to myself. When it comes to spending money on something, like I said before, I try to treat myself to something, very much something, every pay period. If you feel like every pay period is not feasible for you, try once a month. If once a month doesn't work, you know, try every other month, but make sure that you are treating yourself. We have a very bad habit of make, making sure that our kids have the finest of threads, the finest of shoes, what have you. And there's nothing wrong with taking care of your kids, but make sure that you're treating yourself as well. Right? All right. All right. So the next tip is say no with love. Sometimes you just have to flat out say no. You cannot do everything for everybody. You, you cannot be everything for everybody. And like my husband tells me all the time, baby, you cannot make everything. Sometimes you just have to simply say no and do it with love. You, you don't have to be mean or rude about it. 
but it's okay to say no and if people don't understand your no then those may not be the people for you okay um you know it's it's okay to be included and to do things here and there but if you feel like you're saying yes more than no and your yeses is causing you to be stressed and worn thin then you're gonna have to start learning how to implement no and doing it with love typically if you do it with love people are interested sometimes like oh are you okay and sometimes that might open the door for people to check on you when you're the one that's always doing the checking so one thing that you are going to have to learn how to do is to say no saying yes and being available for everything and for everybody is going to cause you to be stressed it is going to cause you to become bitter i am speaking from a place of experience i know firsthand what saying yes to everybody and being everything that everybody can do to you mentally physically and emotionally so sometimes you just gonna have to say no baby you're going to have to say no and they're going to have to understand. they just going to have to understand. Because remember, the goal is to get back to you. And getting back to you does not always feel comfortable for the people around you. But once you get back to yourself and you get back to your sweet spot, you're able to be a better friend, a better wife, a better mom, a better child, a better everything to everybody around you. But first, you have to make sure that you're okay. So that brings me to tip number three, which is allow yourself to be tired. You don't get a reward for being burned out. You don't get a reward for not resting. I promise you. I know that the internet has us feeling like um, nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream. Um, the early bird gets the worm. You can sleep when you're dead. Or all of those things lead to you being completely burned out and that goes back to point number two which is you being burned out is ultimately going to cause you to be bitter i don't care i don't care i don't care you have to allow yourself to be tired and when you allow yourself to be tired i can guarantee you you're going to allow yourself to get rest and if you don't do it I don't care your body's gonna do it for you and that leads to things like dehydration mental exhaustion burnout you know even situations where you have more dire medical situations that come because you're not resting you're not getting the proper rest so moms wives girlfriends sisters nieces daughters whatever allow yourself to be tired allow yourself to get rest it's the only way that you're going to flourish in all the other areas of your life and it's the only thing that's going to allow you to have time to sit still and figure out where you are and where you are trying to be you cannot make a plan for your life if you're constantly on the go when you allow yourself to get tired you're forcing yourself to rest and in your rest that's when your mind is clear and you're able to think and put together a game plan for where you're trying to go with your life and i promise you if you allow yourself to be tired you force yourself to get rest everybody around you is going to be much more happy trust me they might be a little frustrated in the beginning because it's like girl i need you to do such and such or mom i need you to do something and you laying down resting on a saturday when we could have been in the mall on saturday yeah but sunday monday tuesday wednesday and thursday because i've rested on saturday everything is running a lot smoother so make sure that you know that it's okay for you to be tired rest is best and then that transitions us to tip number four which is girl ask for help okay ask for help it's okay to ask for help and when i say ask for help i mean ask for help with the kids ask for help around the house ask for help with carpool if you need financial help baby ask the worst thing that anybody can tell you when you ask for things is no nobody knows you need help if you're too prideful to ask for help that's just that now just like you're pouring into yourself and you're doing things to find yourself others are allowed to do so so people are allowed to tell you no and you have to be able to accept no but i promise you i know this from experience there's so much help available to you but when you always look like the strong friend or the strong parent or the strong daughter or the strong sister people just automatically think she don't need help she got it all together in fact we're gonna keep going to her because she got it all together she knows everything she has everything covered when really you over here struggling mentally 
and maybe even physically because you're scared to ask for help. You would be surprised at the amount of help that's right around you. All you have to do is open your mouth and not be afraid to ask for help. Sometimes we gotta swallow our pride, girl. And then the fifth tip that I have to help you find yourself again is to journal. Journaling has helped me tremendously. It has helped me tremendously. And one of the things that I love about journaling is sometimes when you're in the now, it doesn't feel like you're making any progress, right? But if you've written down your goals, you've written down your struggles, you've written down your aspirations, you might feel like in that moment, dang, like that's just a dream. I'm not any I'm not any closer to getting my to my goal than what I was a year ago. But sometimes I go back and I do reflective journaling where I'm reading over my old journals and I'm like, dang, like, I forgot this even happened like six months ago. Look at where I, where I am now. I might not be at my goal, but I'm for sure not where I was six months ago. So journaling, journaling, journaling has helped me tremendously. When I tell you, like even when I was in therapy, my therapist was a big advocate of journaling and journaling helped me through so much. When I was going through a divorce, when I was in my single mom phase, when I was struggling mentally, I was able to journal and it helped me out so much because even in those things that I didn't necessarily feel confident enough to share with others or I, in all honesty I was going through stuff at some point that I was just embarrassed about you know what I'm saying but you need to be able to let it out so my journal in a lot of instances was that outlet for me and it really helped me you would be surprised at how much pen and paper can help you there are different journals I'm gonna tell you once again y'all know just from my content like i'm all about saving a penny you don't have to jump out the gate and go and buy like a journal from amazon or buy a journal online baby get you some regular get some of them kids loosely paper out of those binders that they not gonna use <laughs> get some loosely paper get a pen a pencil and just start journaling and keep keep your journal to yourself and then maybe like once a month just kind of go back and skim over some of your old journal entries just to kind of see the progress that you made or how far you've come and you know i know that sometimes when we struggle or we go through things like especially black women we always get the badge of honor of being the strong black woman or the strong woman or you know you hear older people say my mama was the strongest woman i knew and i remember thinking to myself when i was single and my kids were like you know at an age where they could kind of understand what was going on like i want my kids to know like mama made it happen mama was always there but baby mama was toe up on the inside okay and so i know that sometimes our circumstances just our flesh allows us to be embarrassed even when you're journaling that's your opportunity to get out the things that you might not be comfortable enough to share with others and honestly another thing that's okay if you're not at the point where you want to share your struggles with others um i understand even going back to the point of asking for help we don't always everybody doesn't always have a support system around them where they can necessarily ask for help depending on what the help is so if i'm being realistic i could understand people not wanting to ask for help all the time I can understand people not wanting to tell people what they're going through in that moment but definitely put the pen to some paper and journal and see how much that helps so those are five things that honestly these are things that I have used to help me in my healing journey and when I had my last daughter I so suffered from postpartum depression and I'm gonna be honest with you I just went through a time where to everybody else it seemed like I had it all together I had it all I was struggling on the inside and I felt like I didn't have anybody to talk to. I felt like, because if I'm being honest, when I had my last daughter, it was hard for me to communicate the things that I was going through because it was a planned pregnancy. And so I did have people come to me and say things like, well, this is what you asked for. And so I understand that it's not always going to be a cookie cutter situation but my goal with making videos like this is so that women can understand that you're not by yourself like 
everything is not always aesthetically pleasing and I understand that sometimes the internet can have us feeling like everything has to be so cookie cutter everything has to be all together you know some days I have it together and then there are other days like when I turn this camera off baby we having gourmet sandwiches for dinner tonight okay so you know it, it's about balance and you know if I can add just one extra tip bonus tip don't compare comparison is a thief of joy and I know that it's so easy to compare yourself to people that you see online it's okay to be inspired by others but always remember that the journey that God has you on is specifically designed for you and so that is it I hope that that helps somebody if only one person then I have done my job and if you like content like this or to have more discussions like this make sure that you subscribe on your way out and I will see you girlies next time bye